So, Arsenal had the easiest 5-1 win against Bolton Wanderers while they were wandering around the Emirates in the third round of the EFL Cup. We will be reviewing this game as well as previewing the game against Leicester in the EPL this weekend. As always, please leave your own comments and thoughts in the comment section below. Like the video and subscribe, which is very, very important for us at this stage. Thank you and let's delve into it. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Dive. I hope you're having a beautiful and fantastic day because it was a fantastic evening of football last night with Arsenal having an easy exhibition match against Bolton Wanderers. It didn't feel that way at times, but I think most Arsenal fans that were watching the, the game can easily say that it was going to be an easy um, walkover, right? Ateta fielding a lot of young players. I never saw this coming. I didn't think Ateta was going to play any young players because from previous history, Ateta doesn't really like playing the young guys. You can say he played Saka, he played Emil Smith Rowe, yeah, but they were already in the first team. They were not still like, like academy players, right? Um, yes, he fielded Ethan Wanyiru once upon a time. Um, to kind of piss off Brentford. That's why I think because of what they did against us. Um, but yeah, this time there were so many young games. The goalkeeper was a young in. The left back, the right back was a young in. Ethan is still a young in and he had the brace in the game. Um, we're not really shaky. Jack Jakub Kivio, left centre back, no, right centre back, as well as Calafiori, the left centre back. It was, yeah, it was an easy game. Um, I didn't even think that Bolton was going to score, but they had a good, very good counter attack. Um, Jorginho was the last man, but obviously the striker had much pace and it took Jorginho to the place where he knew that he was never going to catch him. The young um, goalkeeper blinked first and so the guy put the ball away. But yeah, at the end of the day, it was an easy game. Um, let's look at some quick stats and it backed it up as well. This is from SpottingLive.com, by the way. In terms of possession, Arsenal had 77% possession compared to Bolton's 23. We had 10 corners compared to their four. Um, big chances created, we have 5 compared to their 3. In terms of shots, we had 21 shots, 8 on target. They had 4 shots and 1 on target. Um, to show that they were very, very defensive minded, they had 11, they had 28 tackles, whereas we had 11 tackles and it was a, it was a cakewalk for us, like I said. Um, it was not shaky. The only takeaway from there is that Jesus is not ready for this season. Maybe that can be me still being angry because of what he did against Manchester City at the weekend, giving them a corner when he didn't need to have a corner kick. Um, but he didn't look ready. You can see the difference when Kai Havard came on. Right? Kai Havard had more impact in the game, to me, than Gabriel Jesus did for the entire amount of minutes that he had. Um, let me check. How many minutes did he have on the pitch? Uh, quick question. Oh, he played the whole 90 minutes. And I didn't even see as much impact. Um, we had, I think that's another thing as well. I, yeah, Ateta changed the defensive shape, gave Gabriel a rest, gave Saliba a rest. Rice was still playing, Georgina was still playing. I think you need Rice didn't play at the Tottenham game, so you need to give him minutes in his legs. So the front three was Saka, Jesus, Sterling. Sterling looks sharp. Um, he really wanted to score, and I'm glad he got the goal in the end. Saka, as usual, three, four people like blocking him off, but he still had a little impact. Um, he tried to get a goal by himself, but it didn't, it didn't work. Um, I would say among the youngest, Luis Skelly looks the most ready. Ethan was also um, had a, a good game, but I think Luis Skelly is ready. Um, he had a very, very good showing in the left back. Sad that he, he came out injured, but um, overall a good game. So a quick prayer rating. Um, the goalkeeper, I don't know if his name is Jack Porter, but Jay Porter. I would say um, he had an, an all right performance, an all right performance. It's not easy to come into the first team and at the Emirates, lights on you. He was a bit nervous, but he still had an all right performance. He came out to collect crosses um, once in a while. So I would say all right performance for him. Um, Miles, is it Miles? Lewis Skelly. I think it's Miles Lewis Skelly. That's his full name. I'll say he had a very, very good performance. I think he, was the, he had the better performance among all of the youngsters. Yeah, I know Ethan had two goals, but yeah, he was confident going forward, was asking for the ball lots of times. Uh, yeah, he, he overlapped a lot. I'll say very, very solid, very good performance for Miles Lewis Skeller. 
And um, Jakub Kivio had a very good performance as well. Um, Calafiori had a good performance. Uh, he wasn't as good as, as Kivio and Lewis Kelly. On the right side, we had... Oh, no, left was... Yeah, left is Kelly. And on the right side, we had Jack Nichols, the youngest player on the pitch. I believe he's still about 15 years old. He also had a very, very good showing. Um, he was nervous, but as for a 15-year-old, he held his ground very well. So I, I was giving him a very good performance there. And then we had Declan Rice. Rice had a, an all right performance. He didn't really need to do much. His goal, he took his goal well. And he went forward well. Um, I would say all right performance. He, he didn't, yeah. Is bolting. Um, Jorginho, all right performance as well. He was passing. Um, I have the needle type of passes. But yeah, all right performance. Bolting did not offer much threat. I think they were scared of us. Like I said, they were wandering around the Emirates. Um, on the left, we had Raheem Sterling. Sterling had a good performance. He had a good showing. There were lots, lots of times he was running and the, the, the not easily spot his run. Um, and the time that we spot his run, he had an assist for um, Ethan's goal. Ethan had a good performance. He had a good performance as well. Two goals. He scored the first goal and he became very, very confident going to the game. Like, you could see him like, yeah, give me the ball, let me score more. And the second goal, wanted to go for hat-trick. But unfortunately, it was not meant to be. I'm not going to overhype two goals. We know a player that scored two goals in the EFL Cup and now played for Crystal Palace. I'm not saying they're going to have the same career. I'm just saying I'm not hyping two goals in the EFL Cup. Um, on the right, we have Bukayo Saka. All right, performance. He didn't really do much. There were so many men on him. Um, but he was still our outlet. He kind of created the chance for Sterling's goal. Still all right, performance. And up top, um, Gabriel Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm not even... Yeah. No, it was a poor performance from Gabriel Jesus. No one can tell me otherwise. I didn't know what he did. The usual falling down, dribbling, and all of that stuff. He may get better in the, in the future games, but um, I'm not really impressed so far. Right, I know in the Champions League game he had some good moments, but overall it's not effective. You know, we are singing, we believe in Jesus, the Arsenal number nine, but at this moment in time, I don't think we have faith in him as an Arsenal number nine. He was doing, it was more on the wings than being up top at number nine. Like I said, when when Kai Havertz came on, the game changed. Kai Havertz came on, it automatically became like a training session. We just dominated the game, but just Jesus was there all this time. It didn't feel that way because both in they could counter us. Gabriel came on as well after Lewis Kelly's um, injury that solidified the back and that gave us the impetus going forward. Martinelli came on as well and yeah, it was a it was a good game overall, I would say. We've been drawn against um, Preston in the round four of the EFL Cup. Preston were the first team in England to go Invincibles. So we're going to play be playing Invincible versus Invincible. We are going away to um, Preston North. I believe we should do a job there. But they beat Fulham in this EFL Cup. I don't. I know it was penalty kick, but they, they played very, very well. So I don't think we might be playing as many kids as we did this time, but remains to be seen. We'll review, we'll preview the game nearer the time and give our own takes. But the game this weekend is the EPL. 3 p.m. kickoff UK time GMT on Saturday. And Leicester newly promoted. Leicester has not really done much. Um, since they came back up, right? I'm looking at the uh, in the last five games. In the last five games, Arsenal has won three out of our last five games. We beat Wolves, we beat Aston Villa, we drew against Brighton, we beat Tottenham, and against City. Whereas Leicester in the last five games have only drawn three and lost twice. They they didn't have any win in the last five games. I don't even know if they've had a win yet in the EPL. So. What does that say to me? I believe we should be winning comfortably. Um, but you can't say comfortably in the in the EPL. So I'm going to be predicting a 2-1. Um, not that I really like prediction, but I'm doing it because why not? We're doing content. Let's predict 2-1. Um, starting lineup, I believe that judging by um, the news yesterday, it's going to be tricky to if we are going to see um, David Raya in the between the sticks. So it might be Neto coming in. Maybe that's the time we're going to see Neto. Um, left back, Duran Timber kind of went out um, against Manchester City with a knock. So I don't know. I think it might have to be Calafiori there and obviously Gabriel and Saliba. 
And on the right hand side, I don't know if Benjamin White will be able to come back, but remains to be seen. Let's just put um, White there for now, assuming that was going to be able to come back. In the midfield, we are going to have the, the trio, the party, Rice, Jorginho, the front three, the front three, Saka, Havertz, Martinelli, right? That is going to be um, the starting lineup, my predicted starting lineup in a parallel universe. But we're not living in a parallel universe. Mikel Arteta is going to pick his own starting eleven. I believe that that should be it, really. Um, you let me know what you think. What is your prediction? Um, what do you think is going to be the starting eleven? You let us know in the comment section below. And please subscribe to the channel. I would like to grow this channel as quickly as possible. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video as well. Thank you very much. And we're going to be reviewing the game after the Leicester game. Hopefully we have a win and we are smiling the same way I'm smiling right now and it's going to be an easy cakewalk type of reaction video. Until then, stay safe, stay curious. This has been Daft. Use your brain. See you soon. Peace. Oi. Subscribe. Press subscribe. Thank you.